Hmm. I want to go ahead with um, like I want to um, I'm basically interested in designing interventions, fast-paced interventions for anxiety and depression disorders while uh, seeing their impact on our brain. So basically, I'm interested in neuroimaging techniques along with designing interventions. So um, like. I've already working on do, doing review papers on this particular field mm-hmm. and uh, so I'm like a bit uh, confused like how should I go with the masters should I go for a neuroscience degree or should I go for a um, degree in clinical or maybe a research experimental course so how sh- should I go about it it depends again like I told um, um, Yoshita just now that if you want to work with people, if licensing is important, you need to actually do the proper courses. You need to do the proper degree. If you don't want, if you if you're not working with vulnerable people, if you're not working in a field that is where licensing is needed, you need to break your question into two parts. So you said that I want to work with neuroimaging as well yes. as designing interventions for anxiety right Mm -hmm. so why will anybody let you design interventions for anxiety why will anybody listen to the interventions that you design how will we know that your interventions are good um because you know i want to study like on people like to see the effect on people because right now also a lot of uh, clinical psychologists are working with like supposedly mindfulness based interventions but there are not a lot of research about how effective it is so if I'm taking first hand account of um, clinical psychologists so they say that yes mindfulness based interventions are uh, relatively um, much more effective as in like in time like they take less time to be effective as compared to CBT but if I run a search on Google Scholar or for the research papers, I cannot find a lot of researchers on that. Yeah. So there's a gap which I need to bridge. Mm. So um, mm. in that way, I want to go ahead with that so that people may know and more work can be done on that. Okay. So this is a research problem. This is not a clinical problem. You don't want to go out in the clinic and apply those. You want to see the interventions that are already being applied. Are they good or not? First, you do that. And then from that data, you make suggestions. That is why people will listen to you. Okay, this this makes sense. That's why we should probably try out her interventions that she's proposing in her paper. Hmm. Yeah, that makes more sense. So you need to be able to understand where is your hard skill? Is it clinic or is it research? And if it's research, is it research directly or if it's is it after like doing four or five years of clinic? It's it's not it's not it's not, it's not this or that. But for the first step, you need to be clear. Okay. So basically, it's definitely research for me. It's definitely research for you. So what you need to do is you need to um, contact labs in India, research labs like um, Nimhans or your local college. And if they have any experience in publication, you need to contact, you need to email people who have studied mindfulness outside India, read their papers, write them an email and tell them that I will give you data from India if you work with, you know, if you let me work with you. So you write them an email and then you tell them that I read your paper. I think your work on mindfulness is fascinating because um, so something that a lot of undergrads, they make this mistake, a lot of um, fresh, fresh graduates, they make this mistake is when they want to enter the field of research, people often want to do something that has never been done before. So tell me how many of you, we have 20, 30 people here. How many of you uh, from the research context want to do something that has never been done before? Yeah, it's definitely been on my mind. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. That's, not gonna, that's not a good strategy. Yeah. So scientific discourse does not work like this and hundreds of scientists are just stupid and I'm going to enter and I'm going to show them that they've never nothing they've not seen anything before I used to think like that 10 years ago so how scientific discourse works I say a is the right intervention for anxiety I have to prove it either through meta-analysis or through clinical data or through uh, case studies and then somebody comes and says b is better than a They can't just say it, they have to prove it. It takes years. You need to get an ethical approval to even come close to people. You cannot start research studies without ethical approval. 
then somebody comes along and says okay b is okay no no a is better this goes on for four or five years it's not like you're going to enter the field and do something that has never done been done before if you want to enter any field whether it's brain computer interfaces whether it's uh, diagnostic whether it's autism whether it's anxiety you need to know what is happening there it's like a twitter thread you can't enter a twitter thread without knowing what the discussion is going on you need to know what the discussion what are the top experts in that field talking about that should be your first course of action you want to work with mindfulness you need to understand you need to read as many papers as you can on mindfulness and you need to see what are the top experts on mindfulness talking about what is the latest discussion it's you can't enter a room and you know you can do that but you need for, well unless you're an expert you walk into that room and then everybody shuts up and then you say entering the scientific dialogue you need to understand you need to know what everybody is talking about so pull out some papers on mindfulness read them contact those researchers and then see what university offers a degree course check out their syllabus okay check out the faculty members see what are they working on are they even researchers or they they're just teachers then pick a course and do that course then do a masters in research and then then while you're doing your masters study aggressively and try to publish your paper while you're doing your masters find a researcher who is well published in your area of interest how how many papers on mindfulness have you studied so far <coughs> um i would say around um, 30 to 35 papers 35 who is your i'm i'm going to ask a difficult question don't hate me on this whose work is um like what's the latest what is the latest findings in mindfulness whose lab has the most funding on mindfulness research who is um who is the hottest researcher in mindfulness let me put it like that do you know the answer to these questions no you should yeah okay it's a simple question of networking why should they listen to you why should they allow you to work with them curiosity is very cheap let me tell you all of you so you want to you, I'll, I'll throw a rock outside the window I'll, i'll find a very relatively smart curious person if you really love a topic you know you will do something about it 